Hey guys, I hope everybody's doing really, really well. So I am here today because I'm feeling guided to do a separate video for the Divine Feminines, okay? Just messages that wanna come through for the Feminines because I feel like there are some important messages that that you're trying to get, okay, from the universe, okay? It's not gonna be for everybody. This reading is going to be general, but I do feel like it is going to be timeless, okay? So yes, it could be speaking to a lot of you um, during this time period in October because it is a bit of, a, of an interesting month. Um, there are some harsh lessons, okay? That's what I've been getting. There are some harsh lessons that are coming in or maybe that have already started, so you might already be picking up on these, but it's, I feel like the messages that are going to come through are definitely going to be timeless, so you could watch this at any point in time, okay? So, yeah, let's, let's get into it. Let's see, what is going on with the feminines? I will be pulling quite a few oracle cards, so you might want to skip ahead. <clears throat> we'll see. If there's a long um, wait time, I will, I will timestamp, okay, when the reading starts, but... I might actually be explaining each card as we go along. So let's see. What message wants to come through for the feminines? All right, the first one out, we have Eternal Dance, Movement, Wheel of Life, Path of Least Resistance. Okay, so this is definitely um, one of the difficult energies, okay, in this deck, the way that I see it, although there is a lot of positive to it, okay, because this is all about having resisted something and releasing that resistance, okay? Allowing the universe to just kind of guide you and, and just moving with that flow, like just dancing with where with where that is taking you. So there's going to be a lot more that's going to come in um, concerning this, but I just want to get the, um, the rest of them real quick. This is definitely an energy of allowing the wheel to turn you in the direction, just releasing everything to, to the universe, all right? Because we, we don't always have control of this wheel, okay? The wheel of life. Yes, we have control over certain things, okay, in our own lives, but there are certain things in our circumstances that we cannot control. We, and we try to use our own wheel in order to um, turn the events in the direction that we want them to go, but that's not our wheel. It's the wheel of life. That is the difference here. All right, so we also have obedience and we have strength together. Yeah, so this is actually, with this obedience card, it does remind me of justice. Um, the image is also very similar. Okay, she's holding the scale, she's holding the sword, she's blindfolded as well. So this is all about moving in the right direction, okay? So this is something that the feminines are currently doing, but that the, it is requiring a lot of strength, okay, at the moment. But you're also learning strength. You're also gaining strength. And what I'm also getting with this is that you are learning um, what it really means to have compassion for your own self, for your own self. Because it's easy to say, yeah, well, I do have compassion for myself. That's why, you know, um, I don't want what I don't deserve you know, etc. But it goes a lot deeper than that. So we are going to clarify and see and see what we get with with those. Let me get a few more. All right, we have all that glitters and time to go, time to move away from anything that is superficial, time to go, time to move away from anything that is not what it appeared to be or anything that is just, you know, um, glittering on the surface. All right, so I do wanna get just, um, Actually, let me use this deck. I will start clarifying soon to go like a little deeper into these, but I do wanna have the full overall picture out first. All right, and we have the fifth chakra, Archangel Gabrielle, who I actually called in to um, assist in this particular reading. So this is like extra special that this card um, came out. This is all about um, well, some of you might have a special relationship with, with Archangel Gabriel, so take that as it resonates. 
But when it comes to the fifth chakra, right, that's the throat chakra, this is all about expressing your truth, walking away from anything that is not in alignment with your truth, anything that is does not represent truth. Anything that is, you know, that comes across as phony or as wearing a mask. I feel like the feminines, you're definitely, you know, removing your own mask, taking off parts of your own um, persona or your own ego and moving away from that, okay? And that comes with fully expressing how you truly feel and not just expressing it to yourself, um, but actually expressing it outwards, okay, to other people. This can definitely um, be referring to your divine masculine for some of you. It does not have to be, okay? This could be referring to just you um, adopting this way of life overall in general in your relationship, speaking your truth. That is actually showing compassion to your own self when you speak your truth. So again, we are going to go deeper into all of these. I just want to get two more decks. Okay, I didn't expect to get two from this deck. Uh, we have co-create together with the tribe. So I'm actually not going to say much about this. I am going to wait um, to clarify. And let me just use one final deck here. I did have signs just kind of flip over. So I do feel like this is also a time period whenever you're watching this where you are getting a lot of signs from the universe to move in a particular direction. And I do feel like that direction is moving you away from anything that is not based in truth, basically. All right, and we have material world and victim. Okay, so definitely this is what you are also walking away from, right? Anything like all that glitters, right? A material world, anything that is superficial, anything that was keeping you stuck, Okay, and again, we will clarify. So let's let's get into this. Let's see. Let me just move some of these over to make some space. Okay, I will bring them back. All right, Femmies. So let's clarify this very first part. Eternal dance movement, veil of life, path of least resistance. And we have the Ten of Swords in reverse. Okay, so yes, this is, you know, whatever it is that you were not allowing to end, whatever it is that felt like it was so painful that it would be unbearable to really and fully let it go. This is you coming into that alignment of not resisting that anymore, allowing it to just be what it is. Because when you, when you're not, when you're not taking the path of least resistance and you are resisting, that's actually keeping you stagnant. That's actually the opposite of movement. It's like the wheel is turning, right, in a, in a particular direction. It's asking you to let go. That's where the wheel is turning. And this does not even have to be about your connection with, um, with a divine soulmate or anything, okay? This could be just about anything in your life, okay? So take it as it resonates. Um, because I feel like if you're on this path, you know, then a lot of these messages might resonate with you regardless. So it's like the wheel, right, of life, it's turning you. It's trying to guide you in a particular direction. It's like, let's say it's turning right, but there you are. You're, you're putting that resistance, right? You're not allowing it to turn right because you actually want it to go the other way. So what does that do, actually? You cannot be stronger than the wheel of life. So what ends up happening is that the wheel just stops turning. And there's a lack of movement. So that, that would be the path of resistance. You're, you're resisting where the wheel is turning you. It's just going to keep things stuck, which would actually keep you in that Ten of Swords energy because that's a very unpleasant, uncomfortable, painful place to be is when nothing is move, moving. All right, so this is all about you actually beginning to release that resistance allowing the wheel to turn you in that direction, even if it does come with a little bit of pain, but it's the Ten of Swords in reverse. You can recover from that pain. 
that pain will end. Okay? And then we have an energy of justice coming up after that. So, and that's what the, it's like this obedience. It's kind of like, okay, you know, being obedient to that wheel, being obedient to the universe. Um, I don't like that word, to be honest, um, obedience, because I don't feel like it's actually being obedient, um, so to speak. But I think you guys get it. So let's clarify this. Obedience and strength. All right, we have the Queen of Wands and we have the Three of Cups. Okay. So when you begin to be obedient, so to speak, to that wheel that wants to turn, okay, in a specific direction. Yes, it does take strength to actually stop resisting. All right, um, but this is the message here is that once you do that though, once you do that, once you can find that strength within you as this Queen of Wands, that's actually putting you in a position to actually feel a lot more light so that things flow easily, things feel just more lighthearted because as you are resisting, right, that's hard. That's hard. It takes a lot of strength, but it's not the right kind of a strength. It's, it, it, it's the, that's actually, um, it's not true strength. It's more like that would be the physical strength, but it's not the emotional strength that is needed in order to actually get to this place where things are going to feel lighthearted, where things can feel happy following that Ten of Swords. Let's see what else. Ooh, we have the two of cups and we have judgment. Huh. Okay, so making discernments about, about love, okay, when it comes to partnership. Making certain discernments and actually, you know, being um, possibly a little bit critical, not in the negative sense of the word, but being critical where is needed. Like I was saying, you know, that is self self-compassion, okay, which is like the queen of wands. Um, knowing what you are worth, knowing what you deserve. So what does this mean, actually? This is like, because it does go a lot deeper than like what you would think or what, you know, sometimes we just kind of just stick to the word, yeah, self-compassion, I have compassion for myself. But what does that even really mean? Like, if we, if we're constantly apologizing to other people, or if we're feeling like we need to be walking on eggshells, or if we're always the one that needs to be strong, to be the strong one, um, to make things right, okay, strength and, and um, this justice type of an energy. If we're always the one that's strong, um, to always trying to keep our balance, you know, being careful not to be the one who is going to be overreacting, being careful not to be the one who is going to be over emotional, you know, don't say the wrong thing, don't push them away, um, don't say something that's going to make things worse, um, justify them for certain things, and being overly catering, that's not self-compassion. Yes, we do need some extent of having compassion for others, but then we also need to have enough self-compassion for our own selves in order to also um, attract that from the other person. Okay, so this is all about being critical in your own way of how you perceive love and how things can be well balanced when it comes to love and when it comes to the strength. Not, you know, and, and actually, you know, expecting, not, not expecting in terms of, okay, you know, this is how it has to be, 
or that this person better do this or, or else. No, but what you want in a relationship is that the other person can excuse you once in a while. The other person, you know, can be compassionate when you overreact or if you were wrong about something. You have the right to also be irritable. You have the right to be overly emotional sometimes. Don't be worried about whether that is going to push the other person away. Why can't they also be the ones who are going to be strong and, and comfort you? Again, not always, okay? We don't need other people to comfort us. We can find that within our own selves. That's not, that's not the point I'm trying to make here. What I'm saying is also though, the way that we give to others also fully and deeply understanding that we too deserve to be treated in the same way. We too deserve to be justified. We too deserve to be validated. We too deserve um, to have someone else try to make things right with us. We don't need to be the ones trying to get them to make things right. So I'm just saying we because I'm, I identify more with the... Um, feminine energy, okay, <laughs> in case anybody was wondering, but yeah, and again, you know, this isn't going to be for everybody, okay, just take what, what resonates, what you feel is meant for you to hear, and, you know, disregard the rest, um, it could be meant for somebody else, all right, so I feel like that's what this judgment is, is fully coming to that realization about what a, a real love partnership entails, so let's uh, let's see the next set here. All that glitters and time to go. Walking away from whatever is not serving us. Okay, so we have the Five of Wands in reverse, the Eight of Wands in reverse, and the King of Cups. All right, feminines. This five of wands, it's showing how, you know, how these people are um, competing with each other, battling, um, possibly arguing. They're, you know, they're, um, they're not agreeing, okay? In other words, this is that ego that's coming up to show defensiveness or, um, you know, a part, a part of ourselves that is a little bit competitive or that is, you know, just keeping us in conflict, basically, which is that it's that mask, anything that is not real. All right. When something is not real, that's what it leads to. It leads to that conflict, not being able to find resolution because it's not coming from a place of truth. It doesn't lead anywhere. Okay. Eight of wands in reverse. So, when you leave that behind, that's actually leading you to more emotional stability. It's leading you to find that sense of love within yourself, but as well with others. So even if that means walking away from people, relationships, situations, where you might feel like, yeah, but that's actually going to be painful. That's going to make me feel sad. Yeah, but in the, um, in the long run and on a deeper level, it's actually leading you to more emotional stability because you're walking away from something that's not real anyway. You're not tolerating, in other words, anything that is fake, anything that is not true, anything that is not in alignment with what you believe and with what resonates with you on a deep level. So in certain circumstances, this doesn't necessarily mean actually cutting people off completely. It can be, but not necessarily. But it is definitely walking away from that type of a dynamic, not tolerating it in other words. So I feel like a lot of um, feminines at the moment, it's like you're having this, um, sense of not being able to tolerate anything that is 
either manipulative or, um, you know, just kind of beating around the bush or somebody just not being um, completely upfront. Self-defense mechanisms, because that just creates conflict. It doesn't lead to anything. All right, so let's move on to um, Archangel Gabriel here and the fifth chakra. I feel like this is very much um, connected to what to what I was just saying here, but let's see what wants to come through here. All right, we have the Four of Cups and the Hierophant. Okay, so yeah. Um, so this might be a specific message for some of you, but this is all about actually being um, vocal about what it is that you do not like, okay? Standing up for your own beliefs, standing up for, you know, what you feel to be true within your own self, okay? St standing strong by your own values. What values do you not tolerate? So this is actually verbalizing that, okay? Whether it be to your to your masculine, to your um, I don't know, some relatives, maybe coworkers, whatever, boss, friends, just people in your life, actually being verbal, and that does not mean being um, verbally abusive. Obviously, I don't think anybody watching this video, um, if you're resonating, I don't think. And if you've made it this far, I don't think you would be um, the type to be verbally abusive. But, you know, it doesn't mean that you need to be harsh with your words. It's just being honest. Being honest about what does not sit well with you. What is not in alignment with you. So let's see what wants to come through for material world and victim, which I feel like, you know, this could be one of the realizations that you're having is that certain things um, in your material world, like maybe something that was attached to status, for example, or comfort or and just anything that what has been holding you back from something else, from fully moving forward, from possibly co-creating here, co-creating with the divine, finding your soul family. So there could definitely be something that's been holding you back that you are beginning to discover here. So let's clarify. All right, well, we have the Five of Swords. So, okay, it's going to be different for each of you, obviously, but what I'm getting here is that whatever this was, okay, something in your material world, again, the Five of Swords is kind of reminding me of that, all that glitters card. This can be manipulative um, behavior, or it can be something like, um, something just not being what it appears to be, okay, something that is deceptive, and it could even be within your own self, okay, that's not, that's not a bad thing. It's there for a reason for you to uncover, because that, that teaches us a lesson, And then for some of you, yes, this definitely could be um, energies outside of your own self that have actually been manipulative to you. But maybe you were holding on to that for some kind of some kind of a comfort. OK, and that comfort could even just be habit, a situation that you are used to. Um, it gives you a sense of safety, a situation that gives you a sense of um, security. Okay, it could be it could be just about anything for any reason that has been holding you victim to that. Okay, that has been keeping your hands tied, which is preventing you from being able to move to move forward. But again, I do feel like, you know, for a lot of you, these are things you're already realizing and these messages are coming through just to just to confirm what you're already feeling or as encouragement. This is all about not allowing um, your own mind even to play tricks on you about what this security actually is, what is real and what isn't, what is just glittering, but what, what truly has value.
And how does that connect with you having compassion for your own self? Allowing the wheel from the universe to turn, not resisting that. And learning strength from that. So again, you know, the details are going to be different um, for all of you. And again, some parts of this might resonate and other parts might not. All right, so let's see this co-create in the tribe because I'm getting that this has to do, again, I feel like with this co-create card, we're going back to that eternal dance, right? The, the wheel of life, the path of least resistance, allowing yourself to co-create with the divine, with your higher self. Allowing yourself to move towards your tribe, moving, moving home, basically, your tribe, your, your spirit um, team, your soul family, where it is that you belong, where it is that you truly feel like home, okay, because it's not, there's, there's a situation here for some of you that feels like that's what it would be, but it's actually holding you back, at least for now. Or at least in the way that you were um, perceiving it. Like sometimes, you know, this, this material world that's been keeping you victim, okay, whatever that is for each of you, it could be a situation or a dynamic or a connection that can still remain in your life, but there needs to be some kind of shift in the way that you um, experience this, in the way that you go about handling it, in the way that you perceive it. Is there an attachment to this that might be unhealthy, for example? Okay, these are just examples. It doesn't have to be that. So let's see. All right, the Five of Pentacles in reverse and the Six of Cups. Yeah, this really feels like um, an energy of returning. A, a returning to home, returning back to for some of you this might even be going back to um, a feeling of innocence, childlike, where you were more carefree, where you were more um, you weren't as resistant to the wheel of life. The other message that I'm getting here is that once you begin to co-create with your own tribe, okay, with your own soul tribe, your higher self, other people who are resonating with your frequency, with your vibration, this is actually leading you to get out of that victimness, right? Five of Pentacles in reverse. Whatever there is a lack within you, it's like that is going back to a place in time or a place within yourself where everything just feels more at home, where everything just feels more um, balanced. I even, I'm even getting that for a lot of you, this is also um, concerning your divine soulmate connection here. Okay? Could be, could be twin flames, it doesn't matter. All right, especially with the tribe and the six of cups, that once you, if you're in this energy that we've been discussing here, okay, ultimately that's leading you to this co-creating with the divine, with the universe, because you're not resisting that wheel anymore. That is what is getting you out of this funk of the five of pentacles in reverse, which was um, feelings of abandonment, feelings of rejection, feeling alone, feeling a lack, like something is missing. For a lot of you, this could actually potentially lead you to having a reconciliation, right, with a divine um, soulmate, which would also be part of your of your soul tribe. So yeah, I'm I'm really liking these messages. So I feel like it is pretty much complete here. I feel like most of what wanted to come through did. So I'm just gonna close it out with just a couple of. Um, just a couple of oracle cards here. Just any final messages. If this was resonating, please leave me a comment. Let me know if it, if parts of this did. Give me a thumbs up. 
Yeah, you guys know. So let's see. All right, and we have begin now. Take your first step. Okay, so if any of this resonated for you, or if you've been feeling like, yeah, you know, you've been feeling this push to um, release that resistance or, you know, to um, allow an ending to take place and just trust that it will work out, you know, in, in for your best, right? Having obedience, justice, basically here, strength. If you've been feeling that urge to walk away from something that just does not feel right, that just does not feel like it's in alignment with your truth. Okay, that here is your validation for that. Begin now. Let's get one more. All right, and we have the full moon in Gemini. The answers you need are coming. Yeah, take that um, however it makes sense for you. But know that, yeah, you know, if you're open, if you are open to the universe and you are open to receiving messages, you will. You will get the answers that you need. All right. I'm really enjoying this, so I'm actually going to get um, one or two more, actually. So let's see. All right, we have detox, cleanse, and restore yourself. And I feel like that this actually will be a detox, okay? For those of you walking away from situations um, that are not in alignment with you, that could have been um, toxic, actually. All right, this will be like a detox for you. All right, we'll get one last card. One last card from the Unicorns. Okay, and we have delight. Count your blessings and enjoy life. Take pleasure in simple things. Always expect the best. Okay, so yeah, this is a very um, lighthearted energy to close out the reading. So I feel like this is just a message that, you know what, things don't always have to be so heavy. We don't need to overlize everything and, you know, over dramatize certain things that are happening to us at the moment, okay? Even if they are difficult. Even if they are difficult, walking away from something is always difficult. Releasing, you know, certain dynamics or certain aspects of a situation or whatever, whatever that is for you, it can be very, very difficult, okay? But it, it won't always be that way. And this is like a reminder, you know, to also count your blessings and to also try to take pleasure in the simple things. And expect the best because the best is coming for you, okay? Because you are realizing that that's what you deserve. Self-compassion and you deserve to be treated with respect, with love, and with that compassion. Alright guys, yeah, I think that is it. I'm going to leave it at that. I thank you all so much for watching and I will see you soon. Much love.